What do you do when you show up early to school and the kids aren't out? You're sitting inside of a sweltering SUV trying to pass the time. Well, you make a video about your customer's 1969 Super Reverb. It was one of those things where you thought a run-of-the-mill inspection and health check uh, would be, well, run-of-the-mill, and it wasn't. It turned into something a lot deeper. So thank you for tuning in for this episode of Forgotten Gear Restorations. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye. All right, Aldo, you're quickly becoming the most famous and prolific customer uh, whose amps are featured on the channel. Well, that's just the way it is when you're awesome. So this is your Drip Edge Super Reverb and such a clean example of one. Um, but it's been modded. Um, you're getting uh, lower volume and uh, more highly distorted output. Um, the previous owner shared the effects uh, to the normal channel. We have a solid state rectifier there, mismatched power tubes, which may or may not be an issue at this point. But one looks like an old uh, Phillips and then the other one looks like um, one of those from Van Nuys. I can't remember the name right offhand. Um, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove the chassis from the cabinet there. And then we'll do a proper inspection and see what's going on with this old bird. Um, you have, you just have a sleeve of uh, probably more recent groove tubes across the preamp into the phase inverter. You have a Phillips brand um, tube there. You have a, I, I can't even see the the brand, but it's those, you know, those tubes, um, ARS or something. They're, um, they're made in Van Nuys, California or, or relabeled there. So um, what I'm going to do is all the volumes are off. Um, I already, I already know she's not overdrawing current. So what am I going to do? I'm going to hook her up, and then we're going to see how balanced these power tubes are. And this is before I remove the tube rectifier and I'm rather the uh, solid state rectifier and set her up for uh, a tube unit. So let's just get that going. I'll be right back. All right, so the prevailing theory is that this guy is using this plug-in rectifier um, because of a lack of sufficient high voltage. Um, we're going we're gonna to flesh that out, but in the meantime, I have a bad feeling about this. Is this, this might be homemade. Let's see if I can get this off. I have a feeling these are a bunch of four double sevens. Yeah. So do not, uh, yeah, I mean, technically you can do that, but I wouldn't do that. Then here you can see how the other tech fed the effects into the normal channel. Right there. And all of these old white Mallory caps need to go and in, in particular, this uh, bias filter cap, which is not looking too good. I need to get rid of that guy. And change uh, the, the bias range resistor here. Uh, but on the, top, on the top side here, you can see that none of the electrolytics were, uh, were changed. And that in, included what was the, the, bias, uh, the bias supply over here. Now... The amp exhibited super early breakup. I'm talking three, four on a dial, super dirty and overdriven, very Texas. And a lot of guys want that sound from this amp, but just can't get there, especially without pedals. And even with pedals, it wasn't, it wasn't what I heard. This was amazing. However, why was it so dirty? Well, um, part of the directive I received was to replace the solid state plug-in rectifier with the proper uh, tube rectifier, which I did. That brought the plate voltage down to about 340. So you're looking at Tweed Deluxe territory there. That's no bueno for an amp like this, for a, a 26L6 amp here. Um, well, what's going on? Well, obviously, uh, again, like I mentioned, the, the prior tech had seen this uh, particular issue manifesting as 
um, low plate voltage. And that was the extent of uh, his assessment there. So the amp shipped with that particular uh, plug-in rectifier. What I had found was the bias was running wide open, just raw bias voltage into these tubes as much as they could consume, as much current as they could consume they were. That's why the amp was breaking up early. And what a sound. I rebuilt the bias board there and replaced uh, these two coupling caps as well as the two 6L6s. The, uh, the mismatched 6L6s that shipped with the amp um, are absolutely roasted, absolutely. Uh, another thing I noticed is that uh, someone had um, tried modifying this bias supply prior. This is not the before shot, this is after. What I basically did was, uh, in fact, the, the tapped uh, lug here wasn't even being used. Um, I removed a few resistors off of this terminal strip and just rebuilt it uh, per the, the schematic, except I added an adjustable feature there. So you have adjustable bias um, as well as the bias balance circuit in place there. Now I'm able uh, to enjoy plate voltage in a 420 volt range with the thing biased at 60% max plate dissipation. So we're in a good spot there. Have I play tested it? No. What am I expecting? Well, I'm expecting overdrive, maybe around five or six. And I'm expecting a bit more headroom. So uh, what I'll do is I'll do a play test, uh, but before I may uh, weave in some, some of the other failed video uh, clips uh, that show what the filter cap board looks like. And it's not good. I mean, there's two uh, of the newer f and brand cap sitting on a reservoir supply. And then there's, a, and to me, an unknown, uh, maybe a cheaper brand of caps covering like the phase inverter and all the other stuff down to the input. So uh, the guy also didn't bother bending the leads and stuffing them into the eyelid board. Instead, he just laid the lead over, uh, melted the solder, the existing solder, and then just clipped the excess lead. So it looks really bad down there. Now, uh, what's left? Well, I'm going to correct that, and then I'm also going to change these little electrolytic bypass caps here so we can get some proper gain on the, all these little juicy stages. So, uh, Aldo, obviously, I'm going to um, take all of your old grumpy parts and put it in a little baggie for you. You'll get those back. But let me run a quick test and just see where she is right now. Bye. All right, Aldo, uh, here are your new uh, bypass caps, little blue guys there. So I will get another audio test set up, and then this one I'll, I'll actually record for you guys. So I played it prior, and I'll tell you this. It still has nice gritty breakup, but a little bit higher up on the dial. It, it's a pretty nice difference. So... I'll get that set up. Uh, it'll be tomorrow on that. And then we'll just take it from there. Um, I, I did clean your control panel here. Um, and it looks like uh, the dude just had the knobs set a little too tight against the chassis. So they were rubbing away at the finish of the clear coat there. And then you could see a little deflection there where the amp had uh, tipped forward. Uh, but there was nothing in the jacks, thankfully. And it just... A binter in just a little bit, just not even noticeable, really. So uh, that's a very common thing. Uh, these amps tend to be top heavy, and especially the the four by ten versions of anything. Uh, pardon me on that, especially when they're set up on casters. So I will touch base with you soon, buddy.